to be a part of any visionary genius like Miyazaki's movies. I mean, I think that would have been very exciting, but to be a part of what is said to be his farewell film makes it all the more exciting and important when you get that call. So it was a very easy yes. I'd seen Spirited Away and I'd seen Ponyo, um, which I think were the biggest hits over here, and I think that's what most people saw. Um, and I was just struck by the richness of it visually. Um, there seems to be a lot of heart that's gone into the hand-drawn animation in comparison to a lot of the animation you see today. And I think his themes are so interesting because they're, there's a fantastical element to what he does, but there's a complexity in the humanity that he clings to as well. And I think that most of my friends' kids, they've all been watching Ponyo and Spirit Away, and that's, those are the films that kids are drawn to. Um, and I think that's a huge sign. I think it speaks to a certain emotionality in them that, and a certain wonder that kids are drawn to them. The Wind Rises takes place uh, in Japan over a couple of decades, over both wars, really. It starts in kind of 1918, I guess, and finishes at the end of the war around 1945. And it follows Jiro, who is the hero of the piece. And he um, is an aspiring young pilot, but his nearsightedness makes it impossible for him to pursue that career. So he embarks on a career becoming one of Japan's top aircraft designers. Um, and it you just... Uh, follow him through his life's journey as he meets the love of his life, as he meets in these dreamlike sequences his imaginary muse in this Italian aircraft designer Caproni, played by my brother-in-law Stanley Tucci, <laughs> and his friend Honjo, played by my husband John Krasinski, so it's a very family affair, you see. <laughs> I play Naoko, who is Jiro's somewhat tragic love interest. Um, she represents a certain purity and I think she really embodies the theme of this movie which is that you want to dream for a better world tomorrow and um, she has a frankness and a positivity and I think that that comes with the fact that she knows that she hasn't got long and she's got tuberculosis and um, she falls in love with Jiro and they have this beautiful romance. I mean, a really incredible, passionate romance. And and they really only have a couple of years together. But I think she is a huge inspiration to him. The two of them meet in 1923 on a train. Um, and they've both got their heads out the window. And, and his hat flies off and she catches it for him. And that's their first encounter. Um, and they have a couple of humorous exchanges and they obviously catch each other's eye. And then uh, the earthquake hits, the Great Kanto Earth earthquake that took place in 1923 hits. And Jiro shows his heroic prowess and he saves her nanny, Kinu. And it's an encounter that um, takes a real hold on Naoko and she doesn't forget him for 10 years and then she meets him about nine or ten years later in this resort in the mountains and um, something similar happens that her parasol gets swept up by the wind and the wind rises and takes the parasol away and he catches it and so I just love that theme that they meet every time the wind is rising and they and something incredible happens in those moments. Joseph Gordon-Levitt plays Jiro um, and I've worked with Joe before and um, and I and I know now exactly why you would want to pick him for this role. Um, there's a sort of buoyancy and a youth to Joe, and there's he is someone who thinks outside of the box and carves out new space for himself all the time. And so he's got the right spirit and character to play someone as inventive and um, entrepreneurial as Jiro. The dream sequences include Jiro's encounters with this very inspiring imaginary muse in the form of Mr. Mr. Caproni, who was an Italian aircraft designer 
and um, really, Mr. Mr. Caproni is his is the ultimate muse for Giro, and I feel that through these encounters, Giro's genius is actually un unlocked, and he's very much emboldened by these encounters. This one's a little more challenging because you're adapting to um, a character that's already there. And I've done an animated movies before, but you you record the voice and then they match to you. And so this is kind of like ADR to a <laughs> already there animated character. Um, but what I found actually really thrilling about it and more helpful than usual is that you get a real sense of what the scene is asking of you. And so actually I ended up found, finding it a lot easier in some ways because you get a sense of what film you're in. I think because the main idea you come away from is we must live. We must live and we must think for oneself and be emboldened by the dreams that we have and overcome our losses and accomplishments. It feels like that there's some resolution to it. And I think that's why the message speaks strongly to me in the sense that this is his last film. Now, I think this is an incredibly emotional film. I felt that even working on it today. And I think people are going to literally feel like they're being lifted up by the wind because it, it, there's something very rousing about it and about the ideas in it um, and so I think more than anything you're going to feel rather swept away by how emotional it makes you feel.